Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today I'm excited to be unboxing Eldridge Horror Cities in Ruin expansion. This is an expansion that I've been waiting so long to get my hands on. I actually had a hard time finding this one, but I finally got it and this actually does conclude the second last, if I'm not mistaken, expansion that I need to pick up for Eldridge Horror. We have one more expansion, if I'm not mistaken, left to go before we have the complete set for this game. Being that this is such a popular solo game not just from the community but one game that I truly truly enjoy and this game does come back to the table quite often for me I really am excited to see what's inside this box and what's going to be able to be merged in as I continue to rip through the ancient ones trying to take down each and every one of them so without further ado you're here to see the contents inside the box but first let's flip this thing over on the back side and take a look at what we can expect the human age is ending Violent quakes split the world asunder, and nature itself is seemingly intent on destroying the civilizations of humanity. Deep in the heart of Africa, something is stirring. This expansion introduces Shud Miel, a destructive new ancient one. Heralding this new threat is the advent of disasters and devastation encounters as well as destructive new mythos cards for weary investigators join the fight bringing with them new artifacts assets spells and talents to stave off the twilight of humankind now all the game contents that come inside this expansion are listed out right here in this box but instead of going through those we're going to actually flip this thing over take the box lid off and dive into this expansion and see these components up close so now with the box lid off the first thing you'll see when you open up this particular expansion is the cities and ruin expansion pamphlet or rule book this rule book is not like a a full booklet it is literally just a fold out as most expansions are in Eldritch Horror that are a small box size and it's going to list out your components in the top right expansion overview how to use the expansion in conjunction with all the other expansions for Eldritch Horror a good brr well I shouldn't say brief but a good explanation of the backstory of what's really going on here an indication of the icon for the expansion in case you want to break things out people always wonder why is that icon included there well for organizational purposes and also for setting up different games of Eldritch Horror with particular expansions included or not included because as I've been actually doing it, I'm adding them in in release order, but some people do enjoy just having the base game and just one expansion added in in order to keep things tighter in terms of the uh, experience of the encounters that you're running into and keeping them more within the context of the expansion you're playing versus just dumping every expansion in. And of course, there's a lot more randomization going on there. So some of the uh, different cards may or may not tie into the expansion that you're playing. So that is there simply to really do with as you please for organizational purposes or even gameplay purposes, but it's important nonetheless. Next up on the next page here, we're going to talk about cards that we have seen in previous expansions, but they do go over them here in case this is the first time you pick up an expansion for Eldritch Horror because you don't have to pick them up in release order, so not everyone's familiar with all the cards. So they break that all out here. Prelude cards, unique assets, disaster cards. Disaster cards are brand new. I've never seen them myself personally, so cannot wait to see what disaster cards are all about. If you guys are interested in the text that's there, you can pause the screen to read it. This one here is also new for this expansion. They're called Devastation Encounters. So again, a whole other thing to dive into. And I love it when there's new additions added into these expansions because it really does change up the game forever, especially if you're deciding to put this expansion in for the long term. And then you've got additional rules, things like combat encounters, physical resistance, mysteries, skill values, uh, optional rules that can come in. You can bump yourself up to insane game difficulty if you really think that you're having a nice, easy fly through of Eldritch Horror, which I don't think anyone ever has. Control your fates down at the bottom as well. So instead of drawing random ones, you can pick specific ones, things like that. Prelude cards are cool because they kind of start your adventure off. There are these card backs right here. But they're, it's really interesting because you can go about them in terms of adding them in, uh, ran, like adding one in at random, which completely can change at the beginning of your game and even the game board and state itself, or picking one that's thematically kind of tied to the ancient one you're going after. Now on the other page here, 
We also have the backside frequently asked questions. So just a nice sum up of some general questions that they found to be important here with this expansion. And that's pretty much it. So you're not gonna be going through a lot of rules reading to get these things uh, into your particular game. Just some small things to cover. And right off the bat here, we run into the Ancient One card. Here is an up close look at the Ancient One card that you will find within this expansion. Again, I'm not gonna flip this particular card over on its backside because the way that the mechanisms in the game work is once you hit a particular level, you basically awaken this particular Ancient One, you flip it over and that's when the game state changes and things can basically adjust on you. And it's kind of part of the surprise of playing the Ancient One. So I'm not gonna flip that over because I don't wanna ruin anything, but the front side is everything you'd understand from the get go of a game. So nothing's hidden that way. So go ahead, pause if you wanna read this stuff, but I won't be flipping this particular card over. Next up, we've got ourselves some investigators, four of them joining the fray. So again, these characters typically fall across all of the Fantasy Flight products in like Mansions of Madness and uh, Elder Sign and everything else. You'll find all these individuals. So for right here, Ashcan Pete, definitely one that everyone is familiar with. And along with his uh, special abilities and action that he has, along with his skills labeled out. Flipping over to the opposite side, it lets you know a little bit about the backstory of you know what happens if he dies or goes insane and how you can do the checks. You got a location of where he starts, what items he starts with, and a little bio basically for him to let you know what he's all about. Next up here, we got Bob Jenkins. So this individual is a salesman and there is his stats on the bottom. Very good being a salesman and influence. Again, usually the skills correlate to the role, action, ability, and you've got your health and sanity mixed there as well backside where they start their particular items to start with bio and then of course wounds and sanity checks in case they go under next one here rita young the athlete i'm guessing that she is going to be yeah she's pretty strong and uh, again the mix of sanity and health is always very interesting when creating your team different skills always unique and, and the actions are always unique for these which is cool to see so it'll be interesting to see how they jive with everybody else this is the back of her card and what she gets to start off with and there we go, Roland Banks. This is a character I was actually wondering when he would finally show up, but I'm familiar with him from a number of different games, of course, uh, that he's already been introduced. But Arkham Horror, the card game, uh, for sure, as he was one of the first central characters that started off that base set. So cool to see him in the mix now as well. Again, he is a cop or basically a fed, so he uh, essentially has very good observation. And uh, there is his special ability in action, but I've always been a fan of him. And of course, he's going to start Start off there in the states he's got a couple items there that he's actually a few items that he's going to start off with so that's really cool to see so those are all the investigators including the ancient one that's going to show up and once you start looking at the box contents you're going to see the standees for each of the investigators as well as some elders tokens to add in for tracking purposes some new monsters so let's go through the rest of the punch boards here we've already talked about this very first one so moving right along and here we go into some tokens i definitely haven't seen but i'm guessing have to do with this new expansion these tokens not familiar with them at all but I will be becoming familiar with them as I go along for sure and of course extra health and sanity tokens some new monsters added into the fray so you can see the names of those right there I'm not going to bother trying to necessarily go ahead and pronounce all of them but we got some ancient extras we got some formless spawns leopard man all kinds of crazy things you probably don't want to run into but you will be running into flipping them over we'll take a look at some of the stats in the back so you get an idea of what their stats sit at these tokens again not a clue. I cannot wait to find out what they do and what they're for. Uh, they're probably based on the two new sets of cards in the game. We'll find out soon enough. And then another set of uh, individuals that are going to join the fray and cause problems for me. And then flipping this over, the stats for them as well. So those are the three punch board uh, token sheets within the game. And now we get into the cards themselves. But of course, we'll skip right past these. These are pretty straightforward. Standees for the new investigators in the game. They're just clear acrylic stands, plastic. All right, so we're gonna start off with the mini cards first. We got the fetch stick. So again, most of these are gonna have all kinds of abilities on the front, nothing spoilerish here. Uh, but again, you can pause the screen if you wanna read them. It's more so with showing you kind of the names, the artwork. But again, you can see the abilities here. These are all gonna be cards that are gonna add into to decks that currently exist. Although as we know, two decks in here are gonna be for brand new cards I've never even seen of, of before. So here we've got like typical items that you see inside of the game. 
But uh, these are gonna, again, just flush out those decks, allowing for more and more things to be purchased. You got new conditions here, Terror. So I wonder, and of course, because you can potentially become terrorized a number of times and the backs of these cards can have different things happen to them when they trigger, that's why there's duplicates. We've got Attuned here as another condition, only a couple of those. Guts, I've seen that from the Arkham Horror card game. Practice is another one here. Quick Study, there's actually quite a few of them in this one. Relent, or uh, yeah, Relentless. And so some of these might be bolstering ones that we already have from prior releases as well, so keep that in mind. Rugged Conditions. Uh, debt, see debt's one we've had before, dark pack, those are always fun. Bless condition, a curse condition. Some new spells, the beast within is the new spell. Uh, the occult, nice, we got a bunch of those. The spectral razor. Uh, Duke, so we're now into unique assets. These are usually assets that are extremely useful and really helpful when you're, uh, well, any, any unique asset that you can gain is typically extremely good. Uh, in most cases, of course, in most cases, it costs you something to get them in the first place. For the greater good, I've seen this card before. These ones are really interesting because they can really be uh, game-changing cards that really can swing things in a wild way. Uh, because again, it says for the greater good. I've seen games go from being absolutely bleak to completely possible and winnable based on these cards and what's on the back of them. So cool to see more of them added in. Light of Reason, I don't think I've seen that one before. Seeking the Masters, that looks new as well. And Wave of Destruction, also another note. So the Destruction seems to be kind of the keyword for the new cards. All right, I'm really excited here because you can see these new card backs from this expansion that I've not seen before at the very back of this deck. So let's just go through the backs of the decks. You can see kind of the card types that are being added in. So a number of those. Of course, we got cards that are specific to the Ancient One and there's multiple versions of those, which basically flush out the storyline that's gonna be going on with trying to investigate this. Ancient one to take it down. We got more location cards for advent, or I shouldn't say adventures, but for uh, some of the different tokens you can chase around the game board in order to gain great items and artifacts. You got some gates here to add in some more fun with those, some city encounters. So we're gonna flip these over and we'll take a quick look. Again, I don't wanna spoil anything. So these are just generic city encounters. We got some gate cards. Essentially, it's like you do the check, positive, negative. That's basically how it typically runs. Going into this one here, depending on where you're sitting, these are generic black encounters. Or sorry, these ones are actually specific, my mistake. Typically they are when it's City Wilderness C. Usually they're black generic ones um, that look like this. But in this case, these ones correlate to the ancient one that you're actually playing against, which again, when you're going after clues that uh, are in a specific scenario, make it really thematic because you're playing against actual city, wilderness, and sea events for clues that have to do with the ancient one you're playing, which makes it really, ties it in really nicely. So a whole bunch of those all the way through. And then of course, we got some of these, for like really the research encounters, if I'm not mistaken. Keep on moving through here. Now this is where we get into the cards that I've never seen before. So they're, they look completely different. There's a good chunk of them that's artwork and it says here like the lead investigator and other investigators within two spaces, each lose two sanity, move to a random space, become delayed. So it doesn't look like these are good. They're just, they're called destruction cards. So there's like earthquakes can hit, explosions. Oh, this looks like it's just like bad news for specific locations on the game board. So that's crazy. It kind of makes sense being that it's cities and ruins. So essentially if I'm understanding or remembering correctly now, it's starting to click in my brain that this is all about taking down cities. Basically uh, Eldritch Horror has a lot of linked cities and uh, countries together. And by adding this expansion in, it starts to sever some of those connections. And I believe when a city goes down or gets destroyed, then you can't just kind of move through it at will like you normally can. So it, believe, it, it starts to mess with movement in the game primarily. All right, there's the back of another deck of cards that's brand new to this game. So this is what they look like. So we'll flip through those. We'll see them at the very end here. We got the prelude cards and we got some cards specific. These are the objectives going after the ancient one. You gotta get, you gotta solve a number of these in order to win. And of course, some cards are gonna go into the encounter decks. So it's always nice to see that because it just spices things up. And you got mythos cards, which always cause nightmares to happen throughout the game. So a mix of yellow bordered ones, green bordered ones, and blue. And these are basically gonna be categorized into three different decks, which then are randomly put, built out to create kind of a, a flow for your um, adventure against an ancient one, essentially. 
and you've got all these. Again, they're kind of spoilers, so I don't really want to focus on these too, too long, because really this is what you're going to discover as you go through the game, the exciting portions. And of course, you've got your major, major cards here, objectives to take out the Ancient One. So again, definitely don't want to show those off. Um, this stuff here, Prelude cards, these are pretty interesting, because really they just take, uh, if it's randomized, and you're doing this random, you add it to the Prelude cards you already have. If you just want to keep them specific to a particular expansion or... or um, ancient one you're going after if I wanted to play one I just randomly pick from this group so that at least it ties into the ancient one I'm playing I think that makes the most sense but there's a number of them so it's really cool that they do that because it can change the game state up and then these cards here I have no idea just yet but they look like they're very similar to like closing a gate so you have one thing you do up top and then it's a success or a fail and that's these uh, backed cards right here so again I don't know if this is a way that you can kind of fight back the destruction or if it causes a nightmare to happen if you fail it who knows but this is part of the um, expansion that I'm really excited to see because again anything that adds additional content into Eldritch Horror makes things really exciting. Now with that all said, that is going to do it. The box at this point is completely empty. There is nothing else left for us to go over. So I really hope that you guys got something out of this in terms of deciding whether or not Cities and Ruin is something you'd like to add into your Eldritch Horror collection. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on rolling solo.